Lee Ziki and Lindsay Lee have been here before. I think back on their last participation in the Second Sunday Garden Fair, and it is with fond memories. They have, <laughs> I've really built you guys up, but it's with good cause. They always have so much to tell us, so many good gardening techniques, so many very basic things, and then something new, I hope, about some, maybe something new in the way of plants, or, well, maybe whatever you say is going to be new to somebody. So this is going to be great. Um, Lee and Lindsay own and operate the Willow Glen Nursery, a specialty perennial flower nursery located in the scenic countryside north of Decorah. They've gardened together for over 25 years. Perhaps you saw them on Karen Strobing's perennial garden show on public television. I was just at a, the, the, sh the Shade Tree short course up in Ames last week, and I sat at a table with a woman who had just attended your Willow Tower workshop. Uh -huh. And she was ecstatic about her Willow Tower. Uh, I know they have Willow, and I, I'm hoping that they'll tell us a little, just mention that so we can know if you're going to have another opportunity, because I want to build one too. <laughs> Uh, their, their gardens in Decorah are just a wonderful place to visit, certainly worth the drive. Their display gardens are fantastic because you get to see the plants in the garden setting instead of just in a pot. They have a lot to offer us, and I'm going to stop talking because I want to welcome Lee Ziki and Lindsay Lee. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, in fact, um, a lot of thanks need to go out to both these organizations that just spoke to you, because without them, without their energies, the, the library and all the people in Project Green, um, hey, what would we gardeners have to do in March? And, you know, <laughs> I don't know about you, my garden's a little too muddy to, to touch yet, so. It's a little uh, frozen yet up our way. <laughs> we left this morning in a little bit of a snow flurry to drive down here, but even so, on the way down, I saw somebody in their yard with a rake out there uh, removing some cover from the winter, and, and um, that's always encouraging to see, even if it is a little early. Um, yes, we do have a, a secret life in Willow. I'm going <laughs> to go right into that, and um, it's an interesting thing. We, Lee's a basket maker. This is a site. I didn't expect to talk about it, but here, from here on out, we're kind of rambling anyway. Um, we, um, we kind of developed a signature uh, freestanding willow tower that we use in, the, in gardens a lot to get us some height without, um, without having to plant a shade tree, I guess. So, um, and we do teach that as a class that you can make and take at home. In fact, we teach a series of classes on uh, all sorts of gardening things like plant propagation and design issues and some basketry and rock gardening, things like that. Um, and we offer those at our farm at Willow Glen through the summer on Saturdays, mostly. Um, if you're interested in any of that, um, we do have a website that will be up and running yeah. soon. Almost <laughs> ready to be launched. It's, uh, <laughs> It's quite a it's process. It's still on the design table, but it's, it's very close. And it is simply willowglennursery.com. And so all of those dates and um, times for the classes, there'll even be a little registration form that you can download if you want to then send and sign up for a class for us. Um, we also have a, a one-of-a-kind thing happening this summer at Willow Glen with our friends Karen Strobin and Bill Luxinger. And they're going to come and spend a day with us on Saturday, September 11th. So if you want to get a chance to be with Karen at all, or uh, she and her husband Bill, we're going to try to make it kind of informal so that they don't have to you know, prepare too much. But I figured we could dig some stuff and divide and, yeah. you know. <laughs> we'll do some gardening. So that's one thing that there should be more information on that particular day coming out and being posted on the website. And I'm getting a little feedback for you. Okay, I, he's. I just stepped back. I think it'll be fine. You can't, we can't anyway, step We're together. building that as an autumn garden fair. So I think it'd be fun to see what we can come up with through the summer to entertain our visitors. Right. Can we, just for, for our sake, Everybody that's ever been to our place, could you raise your hands? 
Yeah. That's right. pretty impressive. Oh, thank you. I, I kind of laugh at the part um, that Melanie said about that beautiful rural setting, which in my mind and all of you know really means out in the boonies. <laughs> But we are in a really very pretty part of the state and um, we certainly picked our farm because it was where we wanted to live and at the time, I have to confess, we didn't really think that we would do a retail business there, but that's what has evolved. And lots of people who do come visit us say, you know, kind of appreciate the journey and, and that it is a lot of fun. They'll get some friends together and you make a day out of it. But today, Today what we wanted to talk about, a couple of things. As gardeners, when we get to March, we are really getting antsy. And that if you happen to share your home with a non-gardening person or co-workers do not understand this gardening passion, we need things like this where we can come to a place and everybody totally knows how everybody else feels and we need this little hit of color and a little bit of talking about potential and what things we're going to try this year and what things worked okay last year that maybe we'll do again. So when Lindy and I started talking about kind of what we wanted to share with you today, part of it is, is oh, kind of the, the state of the garden. Maybe that's what we should do sometimes, yeah. the state of the garden address. But, yeah, the state of my garden is pretty frozen right now. But we are beginning to see and hear talk about things like mixed borders and, and um, plant combinations. And, and I think that the mixed border idea is kind of a new phrase for an old thing in that everybody in this room in general, in our yards, are really gardening a mixed border. You know, our yards are made up of usually some shade trees oh, and some other woody shrubs. Maybe you've got a perennial bed. Maybe you've got a vegetable garden. Maybe you've got a little annual garden area. In essence, that's what mixed border means. That it really means that almost anything goes. And I think as gardening has been embraced for these last, say, 15 years, we have become a much more sophisticated group of gardeners and, and our passion and our lust for new and different and trying things just increases. And so this notion of mixed border for me basically gives me permission to do anything, everything. You know, if I want to put vegetables in my perennial bed, you know, as ornamentals, terrific. If I have a really small yard and want to get absolutely as much out of it as I can, I may be layering bulbs next to those perennials, next to those shrubs, next to the shade trees. So it's really a way to be very efficient with the space that you have. Lindy and I have 50 acres, so we have a lot of space and we, we can really play on a scale that, that some people aren't as fortunate to be able to do. But in some of the talks we're giving this spring, we're talking a lot about what makes good gardens great. And the big issue here is how we combine our plants. And, and that sometimes that, you know, choosing what we put next to what can really make a big difference. Maybe it's, you know, it's the same way as arranging furniture in your house, that certain arrangements look better with the same players. Well, in the garden, it's the same way, where you may grow the same plants, but how you have chosen to group them, or in the quantity, it really can vary and be more successful or less successful. So now, I have to tell a story on all of us, that most of us, the number one way we plan plant combinations is, we go to the garden center, we see a plant that we've never seen before that suddenly we cannot live without. We take it home, we stand in the yard, and what do you say? Do oh my I God, put? where do I put this? And it's a result of that kind of... Sometimes I, we do it with two plants. Oh yeah. I, <laughs> and, but sometimes it's that on-demand thinking that we are doing that day that ultimately 